And now, for the highlight of our services, the message. And the message this morning by Reverend John Scott is sure to inspire and uplift, transform and bless as it always does. And especially remember to listen out, take your pens out for the homework which he always gives. I know I call it homework. He calls it something else and you will hear. So I invite you all to express your love and as I invite Reverend John Scott to the podium. Thank you, Reverend Sonia. Good morning, family. Good morning, worldwide family. Just welcome to our hearts. Welcome to this amazingly beautiful Sunday morning. I want to pass it on. I want the whole world to feel the warmth and the joy and the beauty of this Jamaican morning. Welcome to our hearts and welcome to our center here in Kingston, Jamaica. You want to pass it on, folks? Can I hear you say, I want to pass it on? There you go, world. You know, in 2019, a number of us were blessed to attend a course in leadership facilitated by Temple member and chair of our consciousness raising quadrant, Mrs. Andre Nemhard. Mrs. Nemhard is an internationally acclaimed expert in ontological coaching, big word. The ontological coaching is the powerful methodology for effecting change for individuals teams, and organizations. And since then, our thriving ministry council here at the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living has had several interesting conversations regarding leadership and the qualities of effective leadership. The recent election of a new government here in Jamaica with the challenges of leadership that face our new prime minister and his cabinet, as well as the new opposition, has had me again thinking a lot recently about the complexities of leadership. I wonder, how did the great leaders like Marcus Garvey develop their power to inspire and influence others? And what I ask myself was the spark that they, need, they used to ignite the imagination of countless thousands of people. Jesus the way show had that spark too, didn't he? I, I don't even know if he could have known that, that that influence that he had would extend throughout the centuries to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate everyone who was exposed to that powerful message. And what was the message? The message was love one another. Not just those who are in your tribe, not just those who are in your family and your combolo and your, your next of kin, but to love all people, to love one another, and to love all life, all humanity, in such a wonderful way. And you know, my friends, that spark that great leaders have had, that have ignited the world, as we sang in our song, it only takes just one spark, just that little, to get the fire going in our hearts. And so I've titled my encouragement this morning as I call my Sunday messages, It Only Takes a Spark. If you think about it, you know, friends, everyone has influence. Am I right? You have influence whether you are aware of it or not. You are always being influential on someone. Well, no matter how short in stature you are, Reverend Sonia, you may, be some, you may be sure someone is always looking up to you. Incidentally, the founder of our great teaching, the science of mind, Dr. Ernest Holmes, was a short man, as we say in Jamaica. He was very short. 
And I was really amused. I had a good chuckle the very first time I spoke at the chapel at Asilomar in California, where Holmes gave his famous Sermon by the Sea, because I found that right underneath the lectern was a little fold-out step upon which he would, he, would, he would mount it in order to speak from that podium and to, to just ignite the whole world with the message that today we are also trying to pass on. That spark of truth, the truth that all men, all women, all life is divine, that God is in everything and in everyone. And so when you look in the mirror, just know that you are looking at God. It is God looking through your eyes at its most beautiful creation. It is so, you are so unique, you are so wonderful, you are so full of God that you have no idea when you walk through your life and go about your daily business just how many people you are touching. According to the Merriam-Webster dictionary, the word influence is derived from the medieval Latin words in plus fluere, which combined mean to flow into. To flow into. So your influence your, is your ability to flow into the minds and hearts and imaginations of others. And sometimes we do it quite unconsciously, but we can also, as you know, do it quite consciously. I want you to think of your influence like a fingerprint. You actually leave it on everyone whom you touch. And just like our fingerprints, we are not often aware that we are leaving them all over the place. This makes me think of how powerful an intention we set when we affirm in this center that our mission as a spiritual community is to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate everyone upon whom we put our fingerprint, everyone with whom we come into contact. And believe me, when you come into contact with them, you leave a print. Do? Am I right? Yes. You really might not even be aware you know, of the scope and depth of your influence, but nevertheless, you have great influence over others. I am often amazed when people meet me sometimes 20 years after having been in a training course with me and say to me things like, I will never forget that you said so and so. It completely changed my life. And I, I once in, in, was introduced to a gentleman at, a, at a, a cocktail party and he said, oh, so you are John Scott. I said, yes. He said, I heard a lot, I've heard a lot about you. Now, my wife came to one of those training courses you did. I said, wonderful. She talks about you a lot. I said, I hope it's, she talks with love. She says, well, I can tell you one thing. From she come from that course, she started to back answer me. I said, that's wonderful. That means she has found her voice. You maybe should send me a check tomorrow morning. It is really quite amazing, the imprint that you make without even knowing. Sometimes when we exert our influence, we may be completely unaware that we could be changing the entire course of human history. On December the 1st, 1955, on a segregated bus in Montgomery, Alabama in the USA, a demure seamstress named Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat to a white passenger simply because he was white and she was not. I doubt that she consciously thought that she was using her influence to change a nation. She was just bone weary. You know when you're just tired? And like we said, in, we would say in Jamaica, me now get up. Me just now get up this evening. Well, that now get up, her single act sparked a 382-day bus boycott led by the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr., which in turn ended segregation and gave voice to a dream for equality in America and indeed in the world. 
a new a thought minister, minister named, named Reverend, Reverend Kevin, Kevin Ross, Ross, who is an author, an author who writes for the New Thought magazine, magazine maintains that there are three ways, three ways of being, being or three, three qualities, qualities, if you like, if you like which, which you can utilize to develop your ability to influence others in, in a positive way, thereby igniting the spark of inspiration within those you meet on life's path. And I wanted to share those three qualities with you. The first quality he maintains of inspirational leaders is that they are intentional. We need to ask, what is our intention? And to set that intention every day to make a loving difference in the lives of everyone we meet, to leave, to set an intention to leave a positive fingerprint on life wherever we go. And when this is your conscious stated intention, you open your mind to loving thoughts and your heart to loving ways of being, and this will inevitably flow into the consciousness of all those whom you encounter. When you are intentional, you're not rigid or inflexible, in your approach. Instead, you align yourself with the divine love that is always seeking to flow through you as a blessing to your world. So I want you to begin each day this week with the intention of using your influence in a loving way. Purposefully choose to be a person who makes a positive difference in people's lives. So that's your assignment. Set your intention every morning to make a difference, to leave a positive fingerprint on everyone whom you encounter this week. And remember that you may encounter them in person or you may encounter them virtually. It's all the same. You are still leaving fingerprints. Set your intention for those fingerprints to be positive so that when people have finished interacting with you, they, they, they feel something inside them which says, yes, this was a worthwhile in interaction. I am a loving, lovable, and authentic member of life, a part of something worthwhile and beautiful and godlike and joyous. So that's the assignment. Set your intention every day. Reverend Ross describes the second quality of inspirational leaders as what he calls integral. And integral means that they have integrity. Lord, I think the world needs this more than ever today, don't you? Leaders and people who mean what they say and do what they say they will do, that are men and women of their word and whom you know you can rely on to show up the way they have said they will show up. As Don Miguel Ruiz puts it in his book, The Four Agreements, A Practical Guide to Personal Freedom, we need to be impeccable with our word. I wish I could give that book, The Four Agreements, to every politician on the planet. I think it would be just wonderful, you know, your word, your word is your bond, my friends. When you give your word, you need to know that the world needs to know that you will keep your word. <laughs> you know, there were two little boys having a, a discussion and... Um, they had been to Sunday school, and the Sunday school teacher had taught them about Satan. And one little boy said, you think Satan exists? He said, well, the other little one said, well, it must be like Santa. You know, remember, you know what happened? What Santa, how, who Santa Claus turned out to be? Your father. So, we don't in this teaching believe in the devil. We don't subscribe to anything that is negative. We believe that when you turn on the light, the darkness is no more, and that it doesn't turn out to be anybody, not even your daddy, and not even if he didn't keep his word, as so many of them don't. But we know that the world is a better place for those fathers 
and those mothers and those people who are impeccable with their word. The third quality, my friends, that ignites the spark of human hearts is the ingenuity and creativity of great leaders. Perhaps this is what impresses us most about the Marcus Garveys, the Ernest Holmes, the Mohandas Gandhis, the Nelson Mandelas of this world. These great leaders are revered because they were courageous enough to use their influence to birth great ideas, and those ideas may not have been popular at the time of their birthing them, but they were courageous enough to speak their word for what they believed. It is so wonderful when you can say, I believe, and mean what you say. Next time you read our Declaration of Principles that says, we believe, just think about each line that you are saying and know that it is so important that we live that belief, that that belief shows up in every facet and every relationship of our life's experience. And so my friends, my question for you this morning is, what ingenious and creative ideas have you left untested in your life? What ingenious ideas have you left untested in your community or even in your church? Our upcoming Summit 2020 is going to provide us all with a glorious opportunity to share our ideas and discover how we might serve and thrive together as a spiritual community that lives our mission to do what? Say it with me, to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper, to love and liberate everyone with whom we come into contact. So that we are going to have a discussion on how we can individually and collectively leave our fingerprints on a world that awakens a world to its spiritual magnificence and that makes it a place that works for all. Not just everyone, which is the people, for every dog and every puss and every rat and every spider and every lizard, a world that works for all the inhabitants of this glorious planet, this beautiful blue pearl, this earth that we have chosen as the schoolroom for our expression on this plane of activity at this time in creation. What a, what a privilege it is to be alive and able to share at this time. I was saying to a friend um, over, over the last couple of weeks, there is a generation of us, I was born in 1943, I, Vaguely remember tram cars, but I was saying, you know, we are privileged to have witnessed everything from tram cars to landing on the moon to the falling of the Berlin Wall to the, the um, dismantling of apartheid. We have seen such amazing changes in human history and human destiny, haven't we? And we have been part of that journey and that, that climb up the mountain of life. And each peak in human experience has been, oh, I never thought I'd live to see this. This is wonderful. And so our summit is going to be another peak experience for the people of the Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living, for those of us who are regular congregants coming physically to the church, but also for those people who join us on the World Wide Web for those on live stream. And as your announcements shared with you this morning, there will be um, members of the church, past and present, people who no longer come, and people who we would like to, to still come, people who have always been in our hearts. You know, I think if you have been to the Temple of Light, um, there has been a fingerprint that you have left on this center. And we too have left a fingerprint on your existence that is indelible. And so we want to share that as a people, as a community, and as a people who are working together in a world that is transforming. What a world. I mean, we're in the middle of another huge transition and huge change, and we're privileged to be a part of it. Isn't it exciting? Isn't it just, doesn't it just send the adrenaline roaring through your veins? Wow, I'm part of this. You know, the truth is we are 
already people of influence. And the summit provides us with the opportunity to have this conversation on how we can use that influence to effect positive changes in our individual and collective lives. So that the fingerprint we leave is one that inspires others to want more from life, that inspires others to awaken to the truth of their being, their, what we call their spiritual magnificence. We can influence others, my friends, to seek for, find, and act from the Christ presence within themselves. And that is the whole, the whole linchpin, to remember that we are divine and that the presence of God, which is our Christhood, our sonship and our daughtership with the Almighty, with the living spirit, is our divine heritage. So that as Jean Fairweather Wilson's poem, which Reverend Sonia shared this morning in our inspirational reading, reminds us, there is to be no more smalling up of myself. Those days are done, my friends. There is no need to believe that you have to act small. You know, my, you know in, my, in my childhood, I used to be amazed because adults would greet each other and my father would say, how are you doing? And people would say, not as good as you. It was kind of, we kind of got taught to be self-effacing, you know? Looking at you, the better one. And I thought, even then I thought, but how do them? You know, of course I'm as good as my auntie. Why should I say not as good as you, auntie? I'm better than she, I thought. So my friends, no more smalling up of yourself. Let us leave positive fingerprints on everyone whom we encounter. And remember, it only takes a spark. And so I have an acronym for you using spark. I hope you have paper and pencil. S, stand for something worthwhile, my friends. Don't be anti anything. Instead, be pro something something noble, something great, something that benefits the world, something that is God-sized, you know, something big, stand for something big. You know? There is to be no more smalling up. Just watch as God stands under your every effort and your every, your every intention to leave a positive fingerprint. So stand for something big. We in this Temple of Light Center for Spiritual Living stand for truth. P. Practice. Somebody once said to a great musician, how do you get to Gant Carnegie Hall? And he said, practice, practice, practice. So practice what you preach. This was one of the outstanding leadership qualities of our, my spiritual mother, my mentor and teacher, and the founder of this church, Reverend Dr. Elmer Lumsden. She always lived on principle. And she always said, John Dare, how you live your life is your most powerful sermon, end quote. And so at our summit 2020, this is a conversation we have to have. How can we live our message? How are we going to practice what we preach? The A of Spark stands for aspire. My friends, aspire for greatness. Everyone should have dreams and aspire for goals. And you know, whether you achieve some of the lofty ones isn't really important. But what is important is who you become. Who you become in the process. And that's what speaks volumes to those around you. So develop a reputation for being determined and committed. And as someone wise once said, strive for perfection, but settle for excellence. So the A is aspire. The R is for resonate. Resonate, love, and kindness wherever you go. Anyone who has ever met the Dalai Lama always says that he just, he just, he just exudes, exudes love, and love and kindness. And the beautiful, and the beautiful Jesus, Jesus himself says in Matthew, 
516, let your light so shine. So that's the key. Kindle. Kindle the light in others as you go. Let your light so shine, as Jesus said, that others may see and seek to find that light within themselves. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. And where is that heaven? It's at hand. It's right here in our consciousness. So the K is for kindle. Kindle the light. Spark. Stand for something wonderful. Practice what you preach. Aspire for greatness. Resonate love and kindness. And kindle the light in others. Take time each day to think, say, and do something to deliberately inspire others to do more, to be more, to have more. Speak words of encouragement to others and offer a helping hand. Set your intention for every interaction to be a peak experience which sets people on fire. My friends, you are a spark for God. Can you say that with me? I am a spark for God. I am a spark for God. You are a temple of light. Say with me, I am a temple of light. I am a temple of light. And you are a center. You yourself are an emanating center for spiritual living. From you emanates all that we stand for as a spiritual community. Can you say, I am a center for spiritual living with me? I am a center for spiritual living. Your fingerprint is love. You have to say that with me. My fingerprint is love. My fingerprint I'm not convinced. Let me hear it. My fingerprint is love. In fact, our fingerprints. What a collective fingerprint that is. Love, love, love. We just have it all over the world. You know, all ten. All over. Everybody will meet with us. Fingerprint them up. <laughs> with love. And so... On October 17, 30 and 31st, and November 6 and 7, at the summit, we're going to stand together on the mountain top of our souls and determine the way forward for this church as a community, individually and collectively. How we can live from that center of our mission to touch, to heal, to bless, to prosper to love and liberate everyone with whom we come into contact? How do we leave those fingerprints on humanity? Oh my God, I'm so excited about that. Don't miss that conference. It only takes a spark. Can we stand and sing the last verse of that wonderful um, chorus? I wish for you, my friend. I wish for you, my friend, this happiness that I have found. You can depend on him, it matters not where you're found. I'll shout it from the mountain top, ah, summit 20. I want love has come to me. I want to pass it on, pass it on, pass it on, pass it on. Namaste.